It's Thursday, December 2nd, coming up live on The View. They're hitting the floor for Hot Topics. From which Dancing with the Stars contestant claims Sarah pressured Bristol to do the show, to why Kate Goslin says her kids are so angry, and why you don't have to be that fat to get weight loss surgery anymore. Plus, she's getting plenty of Oscar buzz for her new movie, Rabbit Hole. And Nicole Kidman's revealing how this mom of three handled playing a woman trying to survive every parent's worst nightmare. And the woman behind unforgettable romantic classics from When Harry Met Sally to Sleepless in Seattle. Nora Ephron's exposing the ugly truth about growing up in Beverly Hills. And her high-profile divorce that inspired one of her hit movies. All that, hot topics, and more, coming up live on The View. Whoopi is not here today, and we miss her, but the rest of us are here. And yesterday um, was the first day of Hanukkah, right? Or was today yes. the first day? Uh, when yes, did it yes, start? Yes, today is the second today, day. Okay. So you got the first day and night of Hanukkah. There we are. And you have told us... And there us are how many? Eight days. Eight, eight days. days. And you have told us that on Hanukkah you give a very special surprise to Steve. You've said this for years. <laughs> we won't say what yeah, it is. That's right. You can imagine what it is. So, what about what it? What on your first night of Hanukkah? Did you light his candle, Joy? I fell asleep. <laughs> wait, 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 Elizabeth. They didn't hear you. You fell asleep. <laughs> I fell asleep. I'm very tired. I have two shows every day. Okay, wait, 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 You're so the, selfish. What about the once a year for Steve? <laughs> if for there's holidays. Seven, there's six more days left, right? So uh, check with me Good next week. Steve. <laughs> But how does it get shortened down? It only you know, it's only the he looks forward to Here's the holidays. My question you to you. Double up why tonight? do you care? I mean, you know why? <laughs> because because I love we it. love Steve. We love, we, we love you. Steve we love is Steve. fine. Steve is fine. Yeah, fine is not good. Fine, yeah, fine is, is not, not good. good. Let's keep that yeah. in mind. Steve right. needs to be great, great, Mama. Your mistake is that you brought it up in the first place. Listen, I'm Here's getting an award from AARP. Enough said. Well, you know. The good thing is that you remember some things. I do. Yeah, because uh, Nora Ephron is on uh, with us um, today, and, and we're very happy to have her on with us. In any event, uh, and Nicole Kidman. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, Nora has written a new book with the wonderful title, I Remember Nothing. <laughs> and we all agree that most of us remember nothing. And this is the kind... You know who Nora Ephron is, of course, and she wrote Sleepless in Seattle, and... and uh, you got mail. And, 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 and you got mail, and Julia and Julia. Okay. And Harry met Sally. Yeah, right. lost some water. So she talks about the fact that she doesn't remember anything. And this is the time of year when you start to go to Christmas parties, and people come up and talk to you, and you haven't a clue who they are. <coughs> what do you do? You, Don't you, we all go through this? Yes. What do you you say, oh, darling, you look wonderful. <laughs> That's what you do. But it's so hard when you see people outside the context of how you, like, if you've seen right. them before, like, if they work at the bank, and you always see them at the bank, and then you see them at a party, and they're not behind that bulletproof glass, <laughs> then you, you you don't know what to do. Right. I don't, so I don't know. I just smile. Well, what do you do when they come up and say, hello, you remember me, and you don't at all? I just, just play drunk. And then somebody else comes up. And now you have to introduce oh, that's that. Tough. Do yeah. you have a code with Steve? I used to have that with my well, ex-husband. When you're with somebody you have, do you know? Well, I used to tell my ex-husband if I don't say this person's name, then immediately you say, "Hey, I'm, you know, I'm ex-husband," and um, <laughs> I don't know what to, I, don't, I don't know how to say that. Did that but work? You, you say, "Hey, my name is so and so. What's your name?" And then that way I would remember it. I just don't go anywhere. That solves the that's problem. I don't do it. Become agoraphobic. Exactly. exactly. That's I have my for that. Your three kids' names. Barely. You know what I Barely. forget lately? I forget where I put things. That's notorious with me. I mean, I have left my Blackberry in the refrigerator. <laughs> I swear. It's like, where's my Blackberry? And the refrigerator. Well, when you, <laughs> carry when you have I children, put my yogurt in the closet when I'm having breakfast in the morning. I leave it in the closet. You too much you know, on your I mind. tell people also, I say, I, I don't remember you. I say, my memory left with my placenta. That's what I say <laughs> when I had a baby. But when I see my son, I call him by everybody's name. Uh, Jeffrey, to me, uh, uh, yes. uh, yes. get over here. Yeah, that's <laughs> what you know. You, you've He's got, got a lot of Claudette Colbert, so a famous actress of the 30s and 40s, she said, the secret to happiness is good health and a bad memory. 
Well, happiness and good should health. Be very, I should be very happy. <laughs> but you know, I just said to you, do you remember your three kids' names? Yes. And you joked and said barely because you're so stressed out these days, right? Right. Well, I just, so, the season right now gets you all Yeah, it does. There's too much going well, on. But you, I, no, before you never said how you remember people's names because people come up to you yes, all the time. But, but, but Barbie, you're, I've seen you at parties and you would no. never know. Oh, I have the worst memory. I don't. You, I, you don't. No, I, I, I would remember, never know that. No, I, I just when I was writing my book, I went out of my mind. I couldn't remember anybody that I'd interviewed. I, I looked at the name and think, did I? You know. <laughs> and then when, when when you have to introduce people, it's awful. And you don't. And if you say to them. I'm so happy to meet you. They say we've met. Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> that is nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. We've it's never better. met. Yeah. And, oh, it's terrible. But if you think you have problems, what about Kate Gosselin with all of those children? Do you think she remembers all their names? <laughs> well, in an interview yesterday, Kate Gosselin denied that two of her children were expelled from school uh, because they were dealing with anger issues over her high-profile divorce. That's what she said it was. It was because she was divorced, but not because of the television show and all of those kids. So what do you think? Well, it's interesting that she blames the husband, she'll blame the show, blame everything but herself. I mean, she has a part in this, too, right? I, I mean, well, I'm, not, I'm not indicting the woman, but it's like you have a part in the way you are raise you talking children? in terms of the divorce or the terms of the TV show? Because I think it's hard to know which is causing it when you have both variables. Look, right. when you get a divorce, a, that's a two-way street, sure, a divorce. Both people are responsible. Of course. And so you have to take the blame. When I got divorced, I, I was writing down all the things I did wrong, and that's what got me through, frankly. Uh, and you, uh, of what I did wrong, not what he did wrong. I would, I would look into then the, you don't make the same mistakes. But the what about the expulsion, to, though, on Kate? I feel like that's... It, it seems to be extreme. If your kid's getting expelled from school, I would wonder, too, I mean, you know, do they just not want the trouble or hype of the family? I would look into but that also, as well. But you know, when you have kids who are on a, expelled. you know, she's in a hard position because she's got eight children, so she needs That's finances enough. for these kids. And really, a reality show is about the only way she can get that That's being on true. TV. But you have kids who are in a very privileged situation 24-7. It is all about them. Then you go and you take this, uh, these kids and put them in reality in a regular school with kids who are just normal kids. It, it, you, when it's you take that privilege hard. and with normal kids, it's going to be a little bit hard. But but I know, but she, uh, she said that... It was not, not, not. <laughs> I don't know what they're applauding for. I don't either. I, I, I think this is hard. Maybe. Everybody, they, they, everyone they, they, in our hard. audience yeah. who has six children, they, raise they, your they, hands. Yeah. But you know, don't, <laughs> no. For some reason, I thought my memory less. I thought, well, you know, was, did we forget something? Go ahead. But, um, but, but you know, she said that the that the the reality show is the best thing that happened to the family. First of all, because as you said, she was able to su support these kids, but that also the kids love doing it. But just the fact that there are six children com in, under the any circumstances competing for the attention eight children, yeah. eight children, eight children. competing for the attention of the mother and the father well, and so forth it and has to produce uh, and you know, it's we're, in we're in a we're in a time that we've not had before with 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 multiple births and and we don't really know how it affects when you've got Five, six, seven. And they also, they, they also remember early on. She said when they, when the show was over, the kids were sad that the whole crew wasn't there because the crew had become part of their family. Mm -hmm. So then you have to take into account maybe their feeling is so a bunch of those people are not there anymore. If they are indeed family, then they are suffering the loss of maybe Twice. twelve, That's true. fourteen, people twenty yeah. people that were part of their family Tell me structure. Again why not she there has six all at once? Eight. But why did she, she, like, she have twins first? Yeah, but yes. then she had six more. Why did she did do that to her? Split well, and she, embryo why don't think split. She meant to. <laughs> no, no, I don't think she meant to. I think embryo oh, split it or something. No, yeah. it was, it wasn't on purpose. No, it was in vitro. It was in vitro. You know, it's like the optum mom. Oh, I see. Like you have no choice all of a sudden. No, you don't. Like they split. You know, these eggs split. They put in a, a few. You don't. Most of them don't take. You know, there times. are people who uh, uh, who have the. The number reduced, but that that's a very difficult decision for mm -hmm. people to make. So, well, whatever it is, what she has to do is she's got eight presents that she has to uh, do for for Christmas but, for these kids. These, but it's a good that. thing that they don't celebrate Hanukkah because that would be eight presents every day. That's so really that's nice. the silver that's lining, <laughs> Kate, right? Jewish, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> on that happy note, we will be right back with more hot topics. <laughs> Well, we're all reading a 
about the fact that the Republicans and Democrats now are having all different discussions about what they should spend their money and taxes and so on. And the House Republicans have said are blocking a child nutrition bill that it said would give thousands of needy children free and healthier school lunches. Uh, and this is a bigger subject because the question is uh, how much should the government be involved in healthier lunches in schools mm -hmm. and vending machines and, and so yeah. on. Um, I want to show you something. First, what Sarah Palin had to say, and then after that, what Michelle Obama, who has an obesity program, fighting obesity, had to say in an interview that we did with the Obamas uh, last Friday. So here's Sarah, and you'll see, and then we'll discuss. Who should be making the decisions what you eat and school choice and everything else? Should it be government or should it be the parents? It should be the parents. What do you think should be the role of government in combating mm -hmm. obesity? A government has a role to play in this issue, as does every other sector. I mean, there is no constituency that uh, should be excluded from this call to action for our kids. So, you know, that's it in a nutshell. She says it should be state, it should be supermarkets, it should be parents, it should be everybody. And, and, it, and the other feeling is government should stay out. Well, the Republicans here are actually playing a dirty trick because there's a lame duck session right now. So they're trying to add on to this bill and say, no, we want, we want background checks on people working with kids and add it on to this bill that's trying to help kids get healthy food. I think that's a dirty move. I think they shouldn't wait until the session's you know, the out of its lame state. And I think if they want to not have this bill passed, they should have the guts and Braun to actually step forward and say, no, we don't want this passed. Clean bill. I'm all for clean bills, but I'm also a fiscal conservative. However, I believe that kids, if anything, should be where we're spending our money properly. Well, you know what, Elizabeth? There's a lot going on right now where the Republicans are blocking extensions on unemployment benefits, right uh, food Christmas. for needy children. It's like, you know, it's like all of a twist. You know well, what I mean? More, please. This has happened Ms. on both Palin, sides. Can I have more? And I don't think it's right. And you, you know, Joy, when we've it's been in this, historically, it's, disgraceful. historically it's proven that when Congress is in a lame session, people will try to block things until they have the majority when they return. I don't think it's right on either side of the aisle, particularly when it deals with children's health. And I think that there's a lot to be done, and I think this money should be spent, but I think it should be monitored. We saw Waiting for Superman, when we so see a ton of money think... being poured into the school systems, not necessarily in a way that's benefiting kids. It should All be right. spent and monitored. So then the question is, do you think that I... All right, I'll... Because you want to clap, I don't want to cut that off. But Sarah Palin, when she's saying that that government shouldn't be involved in school, is she schools? Is she saying I don't want this bill to pass, or does she really believe parents? It should only be parents. Here's, and here's the problem What's with her what she, Here's the problem with what she, she does said. not. You know, the, she does not believe, and many people agree, in more and more government. Interference into aspects of our lives. What parent wants and their, their child are, to be obese? Here's the problem. No, what's, no but I think it's what is bad about them saying we want good food. It's, in the school. It's, it's easy for parents. It's one more place for... I'm, for I'm taking the for other side. It's one more place for government to be involved. Yes. And by the way, it's more expensive to eat healthier. It's much easier to just put a bag of chips in. And but, you know, to leave it up to the parents, sometimes it doesn't work. I mean, I was a teacher. On open school night, I often say this. The kids who are doing the worst sometimes have the least uh, um, uh, action from parents. Well, you know they don't come to open school them. night as much as the kids who are doing well. Right. And so to expect these parents who are overstressed, probably, right. to begin with, to then we're, deal we're with overweight. all of that is, is really unrealistic, I think. Well, I think it's, it's true. When you hear... Well, and I think Sarah Palin's mistake here is not accounting for that right there, because you're assuming that, maybe like your own situation, that, of course, you're packing the school lunch every day. That may not be the case for many... Uh, a myriad of reasons. Okay. I think yeah, you I would need like the government to, to fill the gap. On this day, what's today's date? Second day of Hanukkah. The second day of Hanukkah that Elizabeth Hasselbeck said something that was not positive about Sarah Palin. Well, yeah. I don't want to be. I'm no. teasing you. I'm no, teasing I you because I know I'm teasing you. I it's a very blood. important discussion because she's but... not a non-compassionate person. No, Elizabeth is a compassionate Republican, yes. and that's what we need more out there yeah. of. Okay, yeah. people who have a sense that poor people need help in this country. The yeah. discrepancy between the very rich and the very poor is enormous right now. And it has to be dealt with. And stop politicking on Capitol Hill. I mean, and help poor people. Stop making stop speeches. It. Give but when I, when I went to school, I was a proponent of the free lunch program, which was mandated by the government. Yes. I mean, I, my family and, was and just so way, glad many, that we got some food. Many states and cities do, uh, and the federal government also, to uh, a degree, 
uh, contributes to the school. It's a very, very important discussion, and we will hear. It's a big issue. More it's it's it. an over-encompassing it philosophy of how you to know. deal with people and in this country. And politics messes it up every and they time. Mess it up. Okay, we're all done with with yes. our speeches, and it's time for you to give your message. All right. Well, all right. Zynga, makers of the popular social games Farmville and Frontierville, have announced today the launch of their newest game, Cityville. It's free to play on Facebook right now. Cityville debuts in five languages, English, French, Italian, German, and Spanish, making this the first international game launch for Zynga. It's their most social game to date with new features that allow players to build a city, interact with friends in cities, and build franchises with the help of friends. Over 215 million monthly users play Zynga social games, and members of our audience are going home with a $500 Apple gift card toward the purchase of a new computer so they can check out buzz for her superb performance in the rabbit hole as a mom who is desperately trying to hang on to the memory of her four-year-old boy she tragically lost. Take a look. You have to stop erasing him. You have to stop it. Do you really think that I don't see him every second of every day? The video was an accident, Howie. And believe me, I will beat myself up about it forever, I'm sure. Just like everything else I could have prevented. That's but... not what I want, Becca. No, because it feels like it is. It feels like maybe I don't feel badly enough for you. Maybe I'm not feeling enough. What do you want from me? Please welcome back the outstanding Nicole Kinnan. Buzz, I think, is going to become a reality. It, it, yeah. it will be. And this <laughs> performance and that scene we saw, I know, was w one of the most difficult, right? That you had to actually perform and make. You, you saw a little bit of it. That's yes. sort of a much longer scene. It goes it on is. for about eight minutes, nine minutes. So, mm -hmm. and it's the culmination. It sort of happens halfway through the film. Well, it's the husband and wife that different are... ways that, that people grieve. The husband yes. and the wife. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, and it is. It, I mean, it is so. On point, I think, in hitting on what Barbara just said, in that couples tend to mourn so differently when they're facing this loss. And I just thought that was so real, how it came across, having known couples who have done just that. Did you, in, in researching it, did you go to a bereavement group? Did you talk to couples who have dealt with kind of um, loss? I've, I mean, I have references for mm. it in for, um, a friend... A, couple of my of friends of mine who lost their child but I, I sort of didn't want to um, I, I wanted to use my own well of emotion and my own um, I suppose from the minute I read the character I could just feel her and I think that says so much about how it was written and being a mother and it, that's the most terrifying thing as a parent so my ability to jump there psychologically was just it was available which is what you want as an actor because a lot of the times you don't want to be forcing emotions or forcing an understanding of a character you talk about think well, I mean each of us here I has children say, the film have... sounds before sorry to cut you all off um, okay. <laughs> because it sounds incredibly um, like an impossible thing to go see but um, people that have seen it, and it was obviously a play that was an enormous success mm -hmm. and it won the Pulitzer. Oh, it's, um, it's actually comforting in it a is. way. I saw it. Which and I, sounds I, very strange, but it is. It because is, and it actually and gives how, you... How do you think of that? How do you see that? 
I think because it shows a family and it shows a, um, the way in which we can um, move through something. Mm -hmm. And when we're given something that's very, very painful in life, which we'll all be given at some stage, I mean, that's some part of our lives is losing the people we love. Um, but there is a way through. And I think that's what's very beautiful about the film. And for me, the, the way the marriage is depicted and the love that they both have for each other is um, is really, really powerful. Yes. And it's you, hopeful. You yes. not so. only act in this, but you produce this, which is unusual. For you. So you're really yeah. very committed. Yeah, and I just feel strongly. There's certain stories, I think, that you... that when they come to you, when, when they sort of... Um, appear in, in whichever form, you go, I so want to be able to put but that into the world. What I heard was that when it was first offered to you, mm. you, uh, you have three children now. Mm -hmm. OK, you have... Uh, teenagers, teenagers and then a two-year-old. And and, yeah, and then <laughs> Sunday, yeah. And when it was first offered to you, you said, I'm not interested. And then after no, Sunday... No, uh, no, But this is what... This is... Yeah, so you clear <laughs> it up. And then after Sunday was born, you yeah. said, I am. So now you... This is what we'd heard. You tell us what the story is. Um, five years ago, it? four years ago, we went to, um, to, uh, I read a review. I was in, I live in Nashville and I was sitting in Starbucks <laughs> reading the New York Times and um, I read a review of the play and uh, I thought it sounded, um, it was a beautiful review and uh, I have a partner who's my producing partner and there's only two of us, it's our company. We call it a company, but it's, you know, the two of us. It's Starbucks. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and, um, and I asked him to go see it, and then he got me a copy of the play and sent it down because I couldn't get up to New York. And, um, and we approached the playwright, and he let us option so we, the play. So nothing... So I wanted it, but that was before so I was they, pregnant. Yeah, and then... So yeah. I just had it backwards. So then I was pregnant. I got pregnant because it takes an, a long time to make films certain films, particularly a film like this. Um, it took four years, and so in that time, suddenly I ha got pregnant. And um, then I went, oh, I can't go anywhere near this because I just, hormonally and everything, I was just like, absolutely not. This is... <coughs> yeah. And then the financing became available and all things, it was a confluence of events and I went, do I run away or do I stay? Do I... Now we see how committed I, I am and you I went, I have to make it. Nashville, did you say? I live in Nashville. Well, is that because Keith of Keith Urban? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and congratulations to your husband, Keith Urban, yeah. because last night he was nominated for a Grammy for Best yeah. Male yeah. Country yeah. Vocal Artist. Yeah. So yeah. this is what... I want to I wanna change it a little bit. He's nominated for a Grammy. You've won an Oscar for the others. So which is more for fun? For the hours. For the hours, I'm sorry. For the hours. <laughs> which is more fun, Grammys, Oscar? Because I would think country parties are just Well, a lot the of fun. CMAs is the most fun of any award show be. just yeah. because you have these... Um, it's, it's a community down there that's... It's um, obviously, you know, most people that are in the country music sort of industry live in Nashville, so they all know each other, and it's very... It's just... Um, it's very tight and very supportive. I heard that you got Keith into watching foreign films with you. I did. <laughs> How'd you do that? Subtitles. I just, um, we went and saw, yeah, because I love um, Pedro Almodovar's movies and mm -hmm. I wanted to go see one and um, he's this extraordinary Spanish director, in case you don't know, and um, Penelope Cruz was in it, who's a friend of mine, and so he came along and he said, I don't want to sit here and read a film. <laughs> um, and then he loved it. He sat there and now we, you know, frequently sort of go and see. It's trade crafts. Yeah. It's good. Well, if I was a betting woman, I'd say you both are going to be hanging on to some great awards in the, in the future. And we're going to hang on to you because you're going to stay with us. We're going to be right back with more of Nicole Kidman. <laughs> I'm sorry if you think that that's abnormal. I don't. I don't think it's abnormal at all. But you So know what's what? the problem? We need to at least head in that direction, which might feel strange at first, but... But you want to have sex. Well, don't say it like that. You're trying to rope me into having sex. I am not. I wasn't roping you into sex. Al Green isn't roping? No. Al Green? I thought it was nice. That's all. I was trying to make things nice. You can't. Things aren't nice anymore. Movie wrap.
rabbit hole. Now, Nicole, that was Aaron Eckhart. And uh, we heard that you practically had to beg him to do the movie. You called him up yourself, asked him to do this movie. Now, we, we know he's an actor, but Aaron is he's single, uh, never been married. He doesn't have any children. What did you want him so badly for the role for? Because he's cute. Because he's no. cute. <laughs> no, because I think that he has... Um, I've, I've known Aaron for a long time, and he has a... a um, a side of him which is very raw and emotional, which he doesn't show on screen very often, and I just wanted to give him to, the chance to he be a husband on screen, great. which he hasn't and Al done. Al Green is a difficult one to turn down. <laughs> <laughs> Al Green means yeah. let's have sex. <laughs> Sorry. Now, I was reading that your parents, one of, your father is 73 years old? Yeah. Okay. Turning 73. And in December Australia, 20. and runs 10 miles every day. Wow. Okay. No, no, no. Not true. Here we go again. Okay, not true. He oh, runs true. eight to ten miles every second day. All right. Oh, Whatever. Yeah. Who's counting? So it's a big difference. <laughs> but do you do that too? That's how you stay skinny? Um, I run, and my sister runs. We, you know, there's two girls in our family, and my dad used to get us up when we were little and drag us down to what we call in Australia how the much Oval. Do you run? But it's, I'll run like five miles. I won't do every as day? much as him. No, 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 no. Maybe. Once a year. No, <laughs> two or three times yeah. a week. And his knees have not given out. That's oh, no. amazing. But I, I remember him sort of hobbling around when mm. he was about 60, and, and then he took up swimming for about three months. But then somehow he was not hobbling anymore, and he was back out running. Mm -hmm. I okay. want to talk to you about, about Keith. When we're talking about cute men, um, you both, you and your husband live in, in Nashville. <laughs> but he tours, mm. you do films, and, and you said, what, I'm not, we never spend more than three days apart? How do you manage that? <coughs> we just make that, we make it work. I, do, I go out on tour with him, and, mm -hmm. and Sunday Rose goes. But you said it used to be more. It used to be two weeks, and then we went, nah, I don't like, it's too long. So then we went down to one week. And now we're down to three the kids days. Go on tour, also everybody mm. goes. No, hey, but... Bella and Connor, they don't go on tour. Oh. But it used to be. I like with, them to with go. most <laughs> marriages, it starts with three days, and then no, we'll be separated for a week. No, we'll be separated <laughs> for two. Well, the Yours is the opposite and then side. And then we get so, after that. No, this doesn't look that way. <laughs> no, no. no, no it's I, working, I mean, I'm... isn't it? Yeah, and I think we met, you know, later in life, and so we both are like. I don't, we've kind of learned our lessons from previous relationships and we've come to it. It's the great thing about meeting later in life. And then we go, well, we don't have an enormous amount of time left. We hope we have 40 years, but you never know, right? So yeah. we're like, let's just make the most of it. We just like being together. Love being together. I'm sure, especially this time of year. It's a good sentimental time of year, too. Hey, so... Sunday, we were talking in the break. Yeah. She's two and a half. She's two and she, yeah, in December. Oh, in December. Has she mentioned what she wants from Santa yet? She um she wants pretzels and raisins. <laughs> <laughs> I Are said no serious? presents, and she's like, no, just pretzels and raisins, please. <laughs> That's so funny. You're and then I said, well, well no, she she doesn't eat candy often, so. But she raisins, just... She thinks raisins are candy. She loves raisins. Yeah. She'll choose raisins over chocolate. That's good. And she loves the packets of pretzels. <laughs> so, <laughs> not the big warm pretzels. No, not those. The little, you know, the those packets pain. of salty pretzels. What are children's... Oh, what are their names again? I like the, the names. What are their names? <laughs> Sunday Connor. Rose, Connor and Isabella. Isabella. Why did you name Bella, her Sunday? Her. Was she born on a Sunday? Or does no, it, she's born on a Monday. We were hoping oh, she wouldn't be born on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you name her Sunday? Because um, when Keith and I were single, Sunday was our least favourite day. Because um, I think when you're single, it's, you know, that's a, a lonely a tough day. day. Yes, yeah. it is. Because it's family day. It's day when you want to be with your, love, you know, your partner and... And we both discovered that, that that was our least favourite day. And then when we got together, that was our favourite day. Because it's like, oh, great, it's Sunday. We get to read the papers, stay in bed, you know. And um, so we went... That's the name for our oh, child. Sweet. Oh, nice. <laughs> She's our love baby. <laughs> Thank That's you so lovely. much for coming by Thank and congratulations you. on the movie. Rabbit Hole opens in select cities December 17th and nationwide Christmas Day. Thanks for having me.
when Harry met Sally, the director of Sleepless in Seattle, and the author of I Feel Bad About My Neck have in common. <laughs> They're all the one and only fabulous Nora Ephron, who just wrote a new book, a memoir, called I Remember Nothing. Isn't there medication for that? <laughs> Please welcome back the lovely, the talented Nora Ephron. But we can't even remember her name. I can't remember your name. That's good. Nora, <laughs> I don't believe this title because you write books constantly. You have memory in the book. You direct movies. You direct plays. You write plays. You and direct plays. I remember and nothing. And yet you remember nothing. What are you talking about? Well, because this is what happens. And you were talking about it earlier. You, do you remember when Ryan O'Neill went to... Farrah Fawcett's funeral and accidentally made a pass at a person who yes. turned out to be his own daughter. Yes. Remember this? And everyone was trashing him, <laughs> but not me. <laughs> because I had just been in a mall in Las Vegas, and I saw this woman coming toward me, very pleasant-looking person. I thought, I know this woman. Where do I know this woman? And her arms were open, and it was my sister. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> And you would say, well, how was she to know that her sister was going to be in the mall? Well, I was meeting her in the mall <laughs> at that very spot. So, you know, that's part, you know, it's, it's you not think it's good. age or you think you're on overload? I think some yes, of it, it no, I, I think some of it is that we don't clock things yeah. the way mm -hmm. we did when we were younger. We don't clock faces. We don't, we don't remember where constantly on our way to something else. We're all getting more what ADD than we were. That's what do you true. do yes, when we were true. talking earlier, when you see someone who comes up to you at a cocktail party oh, or this something? this is horrible. And you haven't a clue. What do when you When do? you don't have a... Oh, I don't... I can kind of get through that. It's when my husband comes up, and I know I'm going to have to throw the person's name, and I don't know That's the person's the name. So I have this That's little me. thing with my husband, which is that I reach out and I really pinch him hard. <laughs> and he always forgets that's our signal. And you know, that's, he's supposed to say his name so that that person yeah, will I'll say, Nick yes, and then the name, but... person will say, no, he just forgets. Oh, no. So, so you just say it there. Pinching him. Yes, Pinching. right. Yes. Yeah, now, the last time you were here, we were talking about, you're worrying about your neck. Yes, yeah. I feel nostalgic about the days when I was only worried about my neck. <laughs> now yes. you bigger worries. I okay, do. now you're worried about, as you, I just want to pronounce it, you're Aruba? Oh, yes. Isn't, well, that, but... a, isn't that a tropical island? <laughs> well, yes, it is. It's a tropical island. Well, I'll, you know, they don't tell you, they don't tell you, like, your elbows, Okay. Yeah, what about you? I would, I would like to say, after you feel bad about your neck, yeah. any of you here who haven't looked at your elbows lately because they're facing the wrong way, <laughs> go take a look at them because in a few years, you will be so nostalgic. You know, if my elbows face forward, I would kill myself. <laughs> and, and then we notice, <laughs> I, then we notice this other horrible thing that's in, in the book. Which is that every so often I would get a little glimpse of myself in a mirror that, and I would go, oh my God, I have been walking around all day with this little teeny hole right here. <laughs> it's a little, so, and you know, the reason no one tells you about it, if you have a tag showing, your good friends will say, yeah. your tag is showing. Mm -hmm. But there's no word <laughs> for this. Yeah, there is. So, so anyway, I did not know what to call it, but there is a tropical island called Aruba. I don't know if you've ever been there, and don't go. But, but, um, but the trade winds all blow in one direction, and all the trees yes. blow sideways. So I have named this my Aruba. <laughs> and if you ever see me, and I have one, now you know you to can say... Yeah, Aruba yeah, is short. a chapter called O, oh, yeah. the old and the really old. Yes. Could you explain the difference between the two, please? Well, so I, we can all kill ourselves. I mean, no, I mean, that's one of the things that happens is that you get to be old. If you're lucky. I mean, I'm not old. <laughs> I'm sort of older. That's what I like to think. I'm oldish. Mm -hmm. But the truth is that you do get to a certain point where you have to be realistic, I think. 
about the fact that there is less in front of you than there was behind yeah. you. Yeah, well, Betty Davis famously said, old age is not for sissies. It Do was you... Catherine Hepburn, but it's okay. I think it was <laughs> Betty Davis. I remember. I'll make a bet. I'll make a bet with okay. it's Betty Davis. Well, nothing, nothing, trend with you. you know something, nothing is for sissies. <laughs> You, you know, know that? No, maybe. I just no. want to say something That's about good. this book before we go, because I, I read this book. This is such fun. Yeah, it is a it fun It is book. such an, an easy, happy, <laughs> and you will recognize so much in it. Although, as I said, I don't remember your name, and I've known you for years. <laughs> you, what, you. what is it? Uh, Nora. <laughs> okay. <Yes. clears throat> well, Nora, you say something. You, your, your feelings have changed about email since you did You've Got Mail. And you say that there are six stages of email. Well, I, I you know, know what the those thing are. about email <laughs> is, remember how much we loved it when we first got email? Yes. yes. Remember, how, remember how we had actual friends, on, uh, not friends. <laughs> right. Not I have 1,240 friends. Yes. But we had eight <laughs> friends. And if that voice said, you've got mail, your heart leapt because you mm -hmm. thought you're going to get a letter. That was meaningful. You're not right? going to get something from the Democratic National Committee asking <laughs> you for money. I don't get those. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't, but you get the other ones. <laughs> I bet you get the oh, other I side of things. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you. One of the things I'm so fascinated by is how everything mounts up. Do you know when we were young, if you went out to dinner, you were making a choice. If you went out to dinner, you were not going to watch what was on television. That was your choice. Mm. Television or dinner. Period. Right. Now, you not only don't have to miss what's on television, you don't have to miss everything that's on television. You can tape everything. Every single you thing. can never catch up. That's true. Ever. Right. It's, it's you know, and the same thing happens with email. You go on a vacation, and when you come back, you are punished. Speaking yes. of punishment, yes. I was just yes. told in my ear it was Betty Davis. You owe me. I, you owe me. I said Betty Davis. You, you said. Oh, you see, I can't remember anything. I can't remember anything. Oh, we want to thank Nora Ephron for coming by, remembering to members of our studio audience are going home with a copy of I Remember Nothing. You are gonna love it. I can't remember how to close the show. <laughs> I, I want to wish a very happy birthday to my wonderful assistant, Monique. Yeah? Oh, that's nice. And I want to tell all of you, I think, have a great day. Take a little time to enjoy the view.